Oh, God, and we're so grateful to get to be here. How good and great and big and magnificent is your steadfast, unfailing, unconditional, absolutely almost too good to be true love. Thank you. Thank you for drawing us back here. Thank you for these precious people. Thank you for making us glad. Glad in your presence, glad in one another's presence, glad because you have given us this great gift of life. Would you continue to be present? Would you speak into into me that I might speak your words? In Jesus' good and mighty and amazing name. Amen and amen. So probably you've all had some sort of performance review when you got to today, right? Um, And hopefully they didn't sound like some of the reviews that I started uh, looking up online. One of them said, his man would follow him anywhere, but only out of morbid curiosity. I know. Since our last review, this employee has managed to hit rock bottom and started digging. About another one. She has delusions of adequacy. <laughs> this employee has the, the wisdom of youth and the energy of old age. <laughs> I know, I know. And the final one performs well under constant supervision and only if backed into a corner like a rat in a trap. <laughs> like, so, possibly what we really need to think about is, is this actually a, a performance review that we're doing? And so I read this passage from Jesus and this whole section of, in the Gospels is about the journey, uh, uh, is about, G- well, it's about jur- Jesus' journey from the very beginning when he starts showing up. And now we're near the end of his life where he is telling, he's telling everybody, look, look, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. And the big question is um, not how are you coming back and what's going to happen. The big question is how are you going to live? So here's Jesus, and he's telling this story not about the how wild and awful and terrible those last days are going to be, although if you watched in the 70s those wretched movies like The Thief in the Night, you know very well how wretched it will be. I don't know how it's going to be. Jesus is not telling us that. What Jesus is saying is, here's how you're going to live till I come back. When you come back, I don't know. I don't know. But here's how you live. Okay, so how are you going to live? Jesus says, so this is the story. And the, the a wealthy landowner is going to go away on a long trip. Doesn't know when he's getting back. Calls three migrant workers who come and work in the fields and says, here, look, I'm going to give you a bag of gold. I'm going to give you two bags of gold. I'm going to give you five bags of gold. I'm going to give you this. Now you use it. Do something with it. Do something with it. Just do something with it. When I come back, we'll see how it goes. So the first guy, five, five bad guy, he doubles it. Two bad guy, doubles it. One bad guy is like, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. He's a mean guy. He's so, he's so hard to get along with. I'm going to spare this if he's safe up his back to the home. This is not a talent review. What if it's a talent show? And the only thing is expected of us is that we show up with our talents. This is not a comparison. You know, if you've ever been in a talent show, have you ever been in a talent show? I steadily said no. Uh Uh-uh. I ain't got no talent. I'm not being in a talent show. Because right away, what do you do? You start comparing. Oh, they're so much more gifted than I am. Oh, I can't possibly do that. Oh, uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Mm Mm-mm. No, I don't even tap dance, sorry. I just have cool shoes. That's it. So, what's the, so it's not that we're having a talent show, and it's not that everybody else's talents are better than ours. Well, maybe they may not be. That's not the point. The point is, you've got a talent. And it's not about quantity of talent. 
It's not even about quality of talent. It's that you have a talent. And the, I have always misread this, this story. Oh, you got to make this grow. You have to make this grow. This is not a talent uh, performance. We don't cause growth. God always brings growth. So you look at this five talent guy and he doubles it. Like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I can't possibly do that. We don't. We are not responsible for the fruit. We are just responsible for the faith. We just show up with the talent. God has always been the one who brings the yield. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, God provides the growth. When you talk about a, um, a talent, what we're really talking about is not like, I'm going to invest this and force it to grow. What we're really doing is we are simply being entrusted. It's a talent trust. And the mistake we make is that our talents are not our own. They're on loan. They're just on loan. So, if it's not a talent show, and it's a talent trust, where we just put, put it out there, what if there really is a review of all this? What if we did do a talent review? Okay, so let's look at this story again. In the original language, it says it's the talent in that era was, if this is hyperbole. So when Jesus tells this story, it's like off the charts ridiculous. Like you listen to this and if you're in that era, if you're in the agrarian society where everybody's very, very poor and you hear this story, you're like, yeah, right. Ha ha, that's huge. That's ridiculous. That's like science fiction. We don't even know what science is. Okay. So when he says this, this is, a, I'm going to give you talent. A talent was 20 years worth of a day laborer's wages. So when Eugene translates this in the message as 5,000 bucks, no, no. If it's five talents, it's a hundred years worth of a day laborer's work. So do you see how big this, that's ridiculous. These are migrant workers, basically. Okay, so we've got We've got the five-talent guy who's got a hundred years worth of gold right there. And we've got the two-talent guy who's got 40 years worth of gold. We've got one-talent guy who's got 20 years worth of gold. Well, they're all sitting pretty with that kind of gold, aren't they? But it's a loan. And five-talent and two-talent know that. And they put it to work. They don't know if it's going to grow, but look at this, it's doubled. So five talent guys got 200 years of gold. So what are we really talking about? What we're really talking about is eternity here. We are talking about this great, big, massive picture. That's why I love that psalm. Because your love, oh God, reaches to the heavens. Your love, oh God, is beyond, it's beyond imagining. So... When Jesus showed up, when he first showed up, what did he say? He said, the kingdom of God is near. And then what did he say? The kingdom of God is here. And then what did he say? The kingdom of God is within you. And then what, and then what happens? This parable is telling us the kingdom of God is through us. Oh my gosh. What? This is huge, huge stuff. Can you hear me go? Now he has to turn it down. So, so what is really happening here? Jesus says to, he says to the first guy. He says to the five talent guy. Wow, well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter into my, in the original language it says, joy. Enter into my joy. 
well done. And Eugene, he, he puts it as, from now on you'll be my partner. Can you imagine that? You're, you're a migrant worker for peace's sake, and you're going to be a partner of this wealthy landowner? Oh, woo babies! And then you've got the, the two telling guy, well done, enter into my joy. Woo! You're going to be a partner with me? I am? Oh my gosh, I'm going to partner with you. Can you imagine? I mean, I barely speak English, and I'm going to partner with you. That's astounding. So here, two, one talent guy, how dare you? It is criminal to live cautiously like that. It's criminal. Why is it criminal to live cautiously like that? Well, first of all, it's not your gold. It's God's. Second of all, look at the huge loss. Loss to that poor, that worker who sat on this gold. He could have had joy. Can you imagine what he's missing? He could have been a partner in eternity in something that's so much bigger than his little buried pile of gold. If you've, if you've ever done something that you know you can't actually do, but it, it happened, and you're like, oh my gosh, that was God doing what I can't possibly do. And what you know for sure is that you have just had the most incredible endorphin rush ever. It's the most addictive thing possible. It is astounding to partner with the living God. From now on, you're going to be my partner. It's a crime to live cautiously like that. Ah, I don't want to do that. These gifts are not our own. So what does this even mean? You've got to go quit your day job and go be a missionary somewhere. Please don't do that. <laughs> What does it mean for us to partner here? Well, for so some examples. My friend Ellen is, she was always really, really shy about her gifts. And she really, she, she taught herself how to, how to paint. And she paints beautiful stuff. Well, 20 years ago, we convinced her to do posters for a Finding Your Gifts seminar that we were going to do at church. And so she, she calligraphied all of these. And they were just beautiful. They were so beautiful. 20 years later, yes, she's won Best of Show. She's done all sorts of shows that she's had. But that's not the point. The point is that what she's doing now, besides that kind of stuff, is she's, she's painting backdrops for her church sermons for her. And they are stunning. They are stunning. And what if she'd never, ever decided that she could pay? That I just got one talent. I just got one. But it's not yours. Put it out there. And my friend Martha, boy, I think I've told you about her, and, but you probably didn't actually watch those videos on YouTube, so. Um, I don't know why you would. <laughs> the 17 views were all me. <laughs> so, um, but this, so this Martha, my friend Martha, she, she's this fiery, feisty, 79-year-old Hispanic. She's been in the States for 60 years. And she is, she is fierce in her love for Jesus. And she's fierce in her love for people. And she, she, finds, she finds all of the, the immigrants who, who do not have, they don't know how to get through the system. They don't know how to navigate and she comes alongside them and walks them through all of the services that are available to them and helps interpret for them. She is fierce. And that's her talent. And she would say, oh, no, I'm just a 79-year-old Mexican who came to the States 60 years ago. <clears throat> no, no. <clears throat> or maybe it's like our friend Tim. He just went to work every day. He's an electrician who went to work every day, did a good job. And then one day he showed up at our parsonage and he rewired the whole thing. Kept it from burning down. <laughs> um, because the wiring was so, so old. He just showed up and he used his little talent. That's all. Yeah, but I don't do why I don't I don't paint. 
And also, I don't speak Spanish. And also, I don't know anything about electricity. It's just just show up with what you do have. Everybody has a spark in them that is part of the divine. We do. And so, maybe it just looks like my friend Catherine. She's a deaconess, and she's called to the marginalized, which involves basically children. I go for a walk with her once a week. She has never met a dog or a child or a human that she didn't try and engage. We don't walk very far. (laughs) Works out well. But last week, she went to the memorial service for her friend Jim, who passed away too soon, too young, as happens sometimes. And when she went into the reception, I mean, Jim was this guy full of life and jokes and funny and (coughs) worked with youth and just really a a wonderful, wonderful guy. And so she goes into at least the reception thinking, well, this will be better. Well, I had like two-week-old donuts and coffee and styrofoam cups, and everybody's just sitting there like, nobody knew what to do. And here's these two little boys, Jim's nephews standing there with their dad, and they just don't know how to navigate this world without Uncle Jim in it. And my friend Catherine goes over to them, and she says, do you want me to teach you a song that your Uncle Jim taught me, and then we taught it to kids at camp? And they're like, oh, would you please rescue us? Yes. (laughs) So she took them and their dad, and they, they went away into the back room, and she into the kitchen, where no one was cooking. Um, and, and, she, and she taught them how to do the Grace Squirrel song, I Will Not Make You Do It. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> and she taught them all the motions and bushy, bushy tail, shake your bushy, bushy tail. So they did. And, and they went through it again and again until they learned this Grace Squirrel song. And then she said, okay, boys, I think you're ready. Let's go out into this awkward, stiff, Uh, surroundings where everyone's staring at one another. Let's just go out here and you're going to teach them how to do this song. And you're like, oh, okay. So out they go. They they divide the group into into twos and the two boys, little boys, teach this whole group, make them stand up and they learn this bushy tail squirrel song. And you think, where is this story going, Jane? (laughs) And then, they, and then they had a little contest. Okay, boys, who's the best bushy, bushy tail in the group? And then they had the, the dance-off. They had a dance-off. Those two had to come up here. Those two boring adults had to come up here and be gray squirrels. And the boys judged. They, it was actually a, a talent show. <laughs> <laughs> and the boys chose the winner. And, you know, I think about... about this whole idea of is this if we are really living in eternity right now then every moment is our talent every moment is our chance to connect with someone else every single moment is the talent we've been given and people are the most precious commodity that we can invest in always 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 and you think but my my little bitty talent doesn't make any difference Really? Ask those two little boys. It sure made a difference in their life. Lord God, I don't even know what our talents are so much, but I do know that they are on loan from you. And if eternity is within us, if the kingdom of heaven lives in us, then you're inviting us to be partners with you in this world. So whatever that little tiny talent is that you've loaned us, would you bring it out? Because we are going to say right now that we're going to show up with that in this world. And we are going to trust you to do absolutely ridiculously beyond anything we could ask or imagine good stuff with the gifts you've loaned us. And we thank you and trust you 
In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.